Hi everyone, I'm Wanjing. Today I would like to present the Horizon House to you all. The team that I have chosen from ECA Foundation is the Employment and Entrepreneurship, which I decided to design a dwelling that allows the client to start her own business to earn a decent income, to lift themselves and their family out of poverty, as there is more and more people face a shortfall in work opportunities. So basically, this house is designed to provide the client a space where it can grow herbs and conduct online business, which I think is a worth exploring business. So this is the design intention from the site. The site is located at Cochrane MMT Station, part known as the urban area. First, I'd like to achieve more privacy from the site as the dwelling is still a private housing unit without any physical business. And the second is to receive sufficient sunlight for the planting area to ensure the client is getting highest quality of herbs. The third is to get good air ventilation for planting purposes. From these design intentions, I decided to change the location B facing to the south in terms of few considerations. For example, it allows the client to easily access as there is nearby parking area and it's also away from high DB level area, which is the roads. Besides, the winds are as the winds are come from different directions and cross over at the center and it's highly exposed to the sunlight. The important is the location B is very strategic for pickup and delivery for the online business. And next is the design intention for the building typology. First, I would like to provide a private herbs gardening for self-business purposes in the dwelling, which is built for own use and prevent outsiders who passing by the house simply pick the herbs. To achieve this, a rooftop garden and courtyard gardens can be built as they utilize the spaces and flexible to place different types of planting system. Besides, a courtyard garden allows penetration of natural light and offers natural ventilation to the entire building. Second intention is to provide privacy to the building itself at the same time allows penetration of natural light and air ventilation can be, using, can be done by using screen wall or trellis phosphate. Moving on is the design intention for clients and users. The first intention is to protect the ecological balance as the client can enjoy daily life at the same time doing on a green business. To achieve this, a compost bin area is provided where client can easily recycle the food waste into an organic fertilizer in order to produce more organic soil for planting purposes. Second intention is to apply a sustainable planting system that reduces chemical use and produce an organic herbs which are more valuable. A soil powered hydroponic system can be used as it's more sustainable than direct electricity. Besides, a bundle box can be used as it can conserve water to stop water leaking to retain the soil nutrients. The third intention is to provide an effective production line for the clients. A germination room processing area and pickup window is provided for clients to conduct their business in a more convenient and effective way. So from the team and the design intention mentioned, I've generated a concept of balance between work and life. Balance doesn't mean that both things are the same, just like work is not life and life is not work, but work is included in one's life. So having a work-life balance is important as it helps to reduce stress and maintain a healthier and more productive workforce. By introducing this herbs garden, it's a kind of balance between work and life as the client is work for gardening to grow valuable herbs. At the same time, the garden provides a comfortable environment which becomes part of his or her life. Another example can be given is a dining table can be also a working area instead of just having it for a meal. I would like to achieve this balance concept by having an integration between working and living spaces. Besides, I would like to apply radio organization in my dwelling as we as the central point in both in different work and life activities in different timing at the same time spreading out the energy to the surrounding. It can achieve balance by having well time management. So this is the ideation development that have generated from site analysis and design intention. The design principle applied is axis asymmetry and repetition. So first I started out with a central point and extended the axis following the shape of the site. And then I joined the lines to four of the endpoints of the axis forming a square. It's then go through transformation to create a volume, which is a cube, and it's separated into two to represent the work and life. Moving on, the lower parts are subtracted to integrate with the human circulations at the site. And the upper parts are also subtracted as the lower parts 
but in different orientations to show a balanced amount of surface exposed to the sunlight as I mentioned in previous design intention. The intersection part is also subtracted to allow air ventilation from the side. Finally, the upper part is extended in different directions to achieve a visual balance. And this will be the outcome of the whole ideation development. Moving on is the anthropometry study of this dwelling. First will be the simple living area with a knowledge corner as there is preserved dry herb wall and bookcase instead of a TV console. Next is the germination room equipped with steel rack and grow light system for the seedling process, following by the processing area equipped with a packaging bench and herb drying rack. Next will be a simple dining area and large kitchen equipped with a kitchen island for the purpose of having broadcasting or video filming for business purposes regarding the use of herbs in either cooking or eating. And next is the toilet and laundry with a skylight for the penetration of natural light. Moving on is the courtyard gardens as well as the fish pond to regulate the temperature of the dwelling. Next will be the bedroom two and three, which are the same in size, sharing the toilet, uh, sharing the bathroom too. And moving on is the master bedroom with a private chilling space where they can enjoy the TV program by sitting on a beanbag sofa. Next is the master bedroom, staircase one and two. Lastly will be the roof gardens, which is triplet from the area listed here. So below is the six criteria metric that I've analyzed from the anthropometric study. Most of the spaces in the ground floor are adjacent to the courtyard garden as it acts as a dominant space in this dwelling. The total spaces of this dwelling is around 103.1 square meters, excluding the courtyard garden, rooftop gardens, and fish pond. The total circulation of this dwelling is 30% of the total square meters. There are some special considerations listed that I yet mentioned previously. First is the germination room, which has to be facing south to receive a fair amount of sunlight and equipped with hydroponic system. Moving on, there will be a pickup window at processing area for clients to either pick up themselves or by using delivery service. Lastly, there will be screen roof or louver at certain parts of rooftop garden for shading purposes. Beside is the bubble diagrams for this dwelling. First is the ground floor bubble diagram, as you can see. I integrated the working space into living spaces. For example, the germination room and processing area is located near to the living and dining area to allow the client to start her work anytime, anywhere. The processing area will be located at the west, so buyer or delivery men can easily access to the pickup window as there is parking area next near to it. Moving on is the first bubble diagram. There will be two roof garden with different entrance to allow clients to categorize the planted herbs. Lastly will be the rooftop bubble diagram, which has an outdoor staircase leads to the rooftop gardens with an outdoor table and chair such as the chilling space after work. So this is the site plan showing how the dwelling integrated with the surrounding. Basically, there will be a pathway leading clients to the direction of the dwelling's entrance. Some of the trees are preserved to block and beautify the negative views from the site. Following is the ground floor plan. First, you are entering the living area with germination room next to it, following by the, following by the courtyard garden, which can access from here, and leading us to the processing area and also dining area. The effective production line is shown at here as client will first buy the seeds and germinate it in germination room. After that, transfer it into the courtyard gardens and then harvest it and process at the processing area. Moving on is the large kitchen with kitchen islands, toilets, laundry, and, and semi-outdoor decking, which used to put the compost bin as clients can easily recycle the leftover food from the kitchen. So there's also a large fridge pond located at the right side of the dwelling to balance back with the courtyard garden and help to regulate the temperature. You will then access to the first floor by using the staircase. The private spaces are located at left and right sides of the dwelling and you can access to the roof garden from these two entrance dimensions. 
there's an outdoor staircase attached with the wall leads to the rooftop. And before experiencing the exposed rooftop garden, you will first reach a shaded decking area, which is here, equipped with tables and chairs. The shading device is at this area is also used to put the solar panel for the hydroponic system. Next is the elevation of this dwelling. The most special part of this dwelling is that it has a large aluminum trellis facade start from ground to the rooftop. It's attached with wire mesh act as one of the planting system which were most suitable for climbing plants. Outsider couldn't access from this area, so it helps to ensure the privacy at the same time provide a good air ventilation. Here will be the pickup window that I mentioned previously with a cover above so people still can get their parcel during rainy weather. Moving on will be the sections of this dwelling. I decided to use planter box instead of the permanent planting system. So client can easily change the orientation and move to anywhere in the garden. This will be the exploded axonometry, showing the structure and materials used in the dwelling. It's mainly built using concrete structure and brick wall, as well as glass curtain walls. One of the special part of this dwelling is that it uses the reinforced concrete share wall as certain parts to create a diagonal cut facade, which is shown at here. Besides, it's the isometric drawings showing the relationship of spaces in the dwelling. The IKEA product that I have applied in this dwelling is the aluminum door frame that I disassemble it and welded it to become a trellis and also the staircase railing. And here are some perspective views showing the uniqueness of this dwelling. And below is the sectional perspective of, of this dwelling. I combined all the slides and came up with this presentation board of the Horizon House. So before I end my presentations, I would like to share a short video clip to bring you all experience this Horizon House. That's all from me, thank you.